Hello everyone, it's Leo and Star Twinkle's over. You probably know that this has been a very special and beloved season for me, so I really want to celebrate it in many different ways. I've been planning to do some videos about it. I'm going to do a video on the best and worst aspects of Star Twinkle, which was suggested to me by Metamorphosis. Thank you so much, Metamorphosis, for giving me this great theme. But first, I am going to do a top five, talking about my five favorite episodes of Star Twinkle. I've revisited some of the episodes and, you know, I've had a time of my life. Like, I cried again, I, I smiled again, I felt happy because I feel like this season really hit the mark in its characters and the way it developed the characters in the world around it. I really liked it. And so I'm going to talk about my personal five favorites. I am only taking my opinion into account and I'm obviously just going to justify my choices, but they're very, very personal. So let's start. In number five, we have episode 26, The Mysterious Invader, The Dreaded Pajama Party. This was a very nice and kind of laid-back episode in which the girls had to travel the universe so that they needed to go to um, Saman, which is Lala's planet, Lala's home planet. We had a whole arc about this travel and this was the first episode. And so like the girls had a little time off, they wanted to do something different since the planet was very far away and Fuwa was very tired so she couldn't warp them there. They had to actually travel through space. And because of that, they had a little time and obviously Hikaru with her Kirayaba ideas decided for them to get a pajama party. And first they watched a horror movie. That was a very nice scene in which we had two girls hating the experience. Elena because she was afraid. Lala because it was very, very um, like bad quality. And Hikaru having a lot of fun because she's Hikaru and Madoka also enjoying like the technical aspects of the movie and complaining for Hikaru not to spoil the things that were happening there. And uh, Yuni at that time just slept. And I feel like um, this episode was very special because it was episode 26, so we had like 25 episodes before that. With the girls knowing each other and bonding, they didn't know each other prior to the series starting, apart from Elena and Madoka, they, know, they knew each other. He kind of probably knew about them as well, but like they didn't have a friendship. And then they started, you know, getting together. And I feel like this episode really cemented their relationship. After they watched the movie, they started talking about each other. They started talking, like saying things about themselves and how their lives are changing with the fact that they're becoming cures. And after their talk, even Uni uh, says like, something's going on because you're talking more about yourselves and you know, you're opening up. And I feel like that was the time in which the girls started noticing their bonds and how strong they've been, they started becoming together. And so I feel like that, that episode was very, very special because of that. And then we had a fight against um, Kapard, which wasn't the best fight. You know, the animation was kind of hard and dreadful, but, you know, uh, they were able to actually use this, um, this complicity they, they became, they, they built together to win the fight, which was nice. You know, they, like, the episode created a plot and then it, like made the plot even stronger by using this idea of them becoming stronger together in the fights, like to close up and say, hey, this is the proof that this, like their friendship is actually becoming stronger because it's being used in some other different aspects of the series. So that was a very, very, very good episode. So this is my fifth pick. And now for number four, it's episode 41, Shine O Moon. Madoka's first step. I think that one of the most interesting things about Madoka as a character is the fact that she was always very obedient to her father, but by knowing the girls and knowing that other styles of life were possible, she started seeing that her world was very small and her like the look she had on life was very short-sighted. And so she started noticing that everything that happened around her, like the great things she's able to achieve, were not really because of her, but mostly because the, the choices her father made for her. 
And like at the start of the episode, we have like a, a, a scene with her and her father talking and her father says, I do whatever my boss tells me to do in my jobs so that I can excel at it. And you are going to do the same thing because I know what's best for you. And so you're going to do as I tell you to. And Monica, like at that time, she realized that she like she is the moon because she's not able to shine by herself. The moon only reflects the, the light of the sun. And then she goes on to talk to Elena about that. And I feel like that moment was great. Like the talk they both had and how they both opened up to each other. Like I feel like Elena and Monica are a very good duo because they can bring like the best out of each other. And Elena was able to show that Monica was being able to smile. She was being able to showcase a true smile when she was with the girls. And so she had to make a choice. She had to choose whatever made her smile the most, whatever made her happiest. And the choice was only could only be hers, you know? And so she started realizing that she should also have the power to choose things for herself. And then Go Uruga came and attacked the girls and I feel like that fighting scene was probably one of the best of the season without obviously considering the, the, the last fight, which was obviously the best, but you know, I, I feel like the fight in episode 41 was probably one of the best, if not the best in the whole season, in the whole Star Twinkle season. You know, Monica looked really fierce and then she was debating, like she was like, how should I do things for myself or should I listen to what my father says? And then she, she realized that she is the moon because she's able to shine as well. And you know, that metaphor of moon being only reflecting the sun does not really apply to her. Like she is the moon because she also has her own light. You know, she has her own power of shining by herself. And then she decided to use all the influence her father has on her to actually choose things for herself, to actually decide what she wants to do in her future. And I think that it was beautifully represented in the fight itself when we saw her father beside her when she was Curiceline with the arrow and then her father, the image of her father became the power of the arrow itself. Like that moment was beautiful and it was like, it, it summed up all that she taught, uh, all that she thought and the conclusion she came with her own thoughts. And then like, one of the last scenes of the episode, Madoka confronting her father. Girl, I loved seeing that so much. And she confronted him with the Celine tone of voice she has. You know, she just goes and says, I am deciding my future. I'm staying with my friends. I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to study abroad. I haven't decided anything. Bye. And he was there, shocked. I loved that. And then her mom came and said, she's growing up, she's becoming more mature, she's becoming herself. And then uh, she changed like the, the, the phrase, one small step for man, or one giant step for one, mankind, which was said when uh, mankind um, went into the moon for the first time, and the only time, I don't know. Uh, she changed that phrase a little bit and she put uh, an article there because that was a big step for her as a person. It might not be a big step for humanity, it might not be like the biggest step someone has ever taken, but for her it was something big and I loved it. And now for number three, it's episode 43, Emitting Feelings Through Smiles, Tenjo versus Elena. One of the things lots of people complained about Star Twinkle was the fact that Elena wasn't a developed, a well-developed character. I kind of disagree with that. I do understand where the criticism comes from, but I think that the way her development was going was okay. But then we got to the end of the season and each girl got her own episode. And then it didn't get one episode. She got three episodes. And I feel like the direction they went with her, like I, I start tearing up just thinking about those three episodes because they were all gorgeous. And I decided on this one because it's the best of the three, but all of the three of them are amazing. And so uh, I believe that one of the things that uh, made this great was the fact that it was okay for Elena to feel confused. It was okay for her to debate on her feelings and the show let her do that freely over time because uh, she was a character 
that until episode 39 didn't really have a conflict like the others. Like, okay, you could say Hikaru didn't really have a conflict, like a clear conf conflict in the series up until the fact that she needed to be alone at the end and she would lose things for her, but then she, she only realized that later on. And all the other characters had conflicts, Elena didn't. And then a conflict appeared in her life and it was something internal. And I believe that for you to work that nice, like it, it was something that we saw in the later parts of the season. And so they, they gave her time to proper, like the narrative had time to properly develop that. And I loved it. In this episode, they go to Tanjo's planet and then they discover what happened to Tanjo. And we get to see why Tanjo became who she is. Honestly, I feel like it's very interesting and relatable because Tenjo, like she, she starts telling the girls her story because they end up, you know, cornering her and she has no way on hiding that anymore. And she tells them, like, it's the story of the big noses. Everyone has big noses and people that don't have, they become outcasts in that society. But there's something very interesting about that, which is she, when she was very young, when she was a child, People looked at her and said, oh, you have a very small nose, but don't feel bad. It's okay. We accept you the way you are. You're different, but we accept you the way you are. And honestly, if, you're, if you are a minority, you probably heard that from someone who does not really accept you as you are. But you know, like, it's a beautiful thing to say. It's a thing that they can just be their prejudiced selves without any heavy burden on them because they told you they accept you and they can spill their prejudice but they told you they accept you that's fine they accept you but they're still you know i can totally understand that joke and if you are some kind of minority you probably understand what i mean but we also have elena's side on this story because she was always the kind of person who's always smiling and trying to make people smile. But then, um, one episode earlier, or two episodes, I don't remember exactly, we saw her mother questioning that about her. As an up to date -er, but we saw that. And her mother was questioning that fact that she's able to smile every time, but what is her true feeling behind those smiles? What's really going on behind that? And Elena started questioning herself as well. She started questioning if her smiles were real or not. And she, she came to the realization that not always she's actually smiling because she's extremely happy. And that, that basically blew her mind. Like she couldn't do anything anymore because it feels like she lost who she was before that. And then throughout those episodes, she started realizing that one of the things that were the most important things for her was to actually be able to make other people smile. And that's why she used her own smile for that. And she used her own abilities for that. And, you know, like if you look at Elena throughout the series, one of the things she always does is try to understand the other person, is try to understand what the other one is going through. In all of Elena's episodes, which weren't many, we had some sort of situation like that. And in this episode, she was able to understand what Tenjo was going through. And she was she wanted to try and turn the situation around and make Tenjo smile. Because that's what make, makes Elena happy. She wants to make people smile. That's like that's what she wants to achieve in life. And so when she realized that she uses her smile for that and that like bringing other people's smiles makes her smile and for for her to make other people smile she has to smile first and then like it's it's something that goes around and it was also very interesting and so at that moment she was able to awaken her twinkle imagination and they were able to win the fight and she was able to you know reach tenjo somehow you know Something happened to Tanjo after that, we know that, but at that moment, it was enough for her because she understood what she wanted. And then I feel like the best part of the episode was when she got home and she started talking to her mom about that and about how hard it is for you to connect to someone, to make someone, someone else smile. 
And then her mom says, like, she says something among the lines of, it's good when you're able to smile to someone, but when you're crying, it's even better because it feels like you are able to showcase your true emotions to that person. And then Elena really started crying and she hugged her mom and then her dad came and she hugged her dad very hard. And then uh, like she opened up and said, look, I know what I want to do from now on because I want to make other people smile. So I love what my mom does as an interpreter. And so I want to follow the same way. And I found that it was very beautiful that both her mom and dad were very supportive of her decision. Like they were supporting her no matter what she wanted to do. And she was able to find that. Through thick and thin, she was able to find what she wanted to do in, for her life. And they stood by her, her family stood by her, her brother, her younger brother, told her at that episode as well that, look, I want help at home. And it's a nice thing, you know, because she basically did everything by herself. And so at that moment, you know, her family all came together for her. What a beautiful episode, what a beautiful moment, what an episode. And now for my number two in the list, it's episode 34. Connected Feelings, Elena and the Sabotan Alien. I think that's the name of the episode. I really have a hard time like trying to fix in my mind the name of the episodes, but I think I got it. Anyways, episode 34 is one of the best episodes of this show. And you might say I'm cheating by putting two Elena episodes in here, but I'm not. This episode was very beautiful. We had an alien coming to Earth and with all the aliens they've met throughout Star Twinkle, they were able to communicate with them. They were able to communicate with them through the power of the pendants that translated the, the languages, you know, and all of the connections were made throughout speech, like spoken speech, because there are other types of speech, right? So um, they were able to speak. And then this alien came, it didn't speak. His speech or their speech is different. They speak in a different way. They, they connect and communicate in a different way. And so the alien was trying to communicate with the girls. He kind of tried to guess what it was saying and she started dancing flamenco with it. But the one who actually was able to actively understand was Elena. And Elena was the one that was actually paying attention, you know, to the alien and trying to actually actively understand what they meant. And then they were asking for water at first and then they got together, Elena got with it and she was able to communicate with it through gestures and feelings, basically. But, and then uh, like she did lots of things with this alien. She was able to show the world to this alien, a little bit of the world, I actually. And when the aliens saw the flower, they, they gave a bow. They took a bow to the flower because they were a flower as well. But then Elena took them to San Lirisa, which is her family's shop. And we as humans, we have this culture of giving flowers to people. We like when we're in love, we give flowers. We like receiving flowers. When someone dies, we give flowers as well. When someone uh, achieves something nice, we give flowers. And at that moment, Elena just picked a flower and gave it to Saburo, Sabotan. I don't remember the name, but she gave the flower to the alien. The alien, being a flower, was shocked with that and was very angry with the situation. And she, they simply ran away. And then um, we get to the biggest point of this episode, which is communication. Communication throughout the humanity is something very hard. And... I think that one of the biggest problems about humanity is being able to communicate with each other while translating something and, you know, trying to translate our thoughts into words and making other people understand us. And Elena was trying to understand what she did wrong. And she was able to see because she was not actually looking at her actions throughout an alien's perspective but actually looking at her own perspective as a human. And so as we have this culture of giving a flower to someone we like or a friend or a lover or whatever, she thought it was going to be a nice gesture, 
but she wasn't thinking that the alien could see this action as something offensive, as something hurtful. And after she was able to process the information with the lenses of another species, she was able to understand it. And she was able to understand that sometimes connection is hard, but you need to have other perspectives so that you can understand, each, so that we can understand each other. And Elena was able to see that. And like she was able to save the alien with the movement they learned together. So like her connection was made. Her feelings were connected. Their feelings were connected. And like we saw that the alien tried to travel the world and tried to, she, the, the alien went to lots of planets. They weren't happy. They weren't able to communicate with anyone. They were feeling very lonely. And then when they got here, they were able to form a connection, but the connection was broken and then it was re restored and the alien was extremely happy. And then Elena told the alien this culture of humans by giving flowers and the alien was able to understand it. And since the alien was a flower, they became flower and they bloomed and they were able to give, to give a little bit of themselves to Elena. And so Elena made a friend that didn't speak a language that was possible for the star pendant to translate. She had to create her own communication with that creature. And that this episode shows how important it is for us to understand each other and for us to try to see things through the perspective of another person and try to understand other pers another person's feeling, another person's reality, where they come from, who they are, it was really extremely beautiful. And one of the things that I was paying attention in episode 48 when I was watching it back again was the people who appeared when the cures were gathering their powers. That alien, that cactus alien appeared at that last, ap last fight of the cures by giving powers to them. And it was beautiful. It was just very beautiful to see them like that. Incredible. And now, before I go to my number one, I have lots of honorable mentions to talk about and I wouldn't remember them by heart and so I have my few notes here so that we can say like our honorable mentions and here it goes. Uh, one of the episodes that were very nice was episode 14, which was the episode in which we saw Elena's family. That was a great episode. We were able to see Elena's brother and the way Lala dealt with the situation was very nice. Episode 15 was also one of the best. It was Blue Cat's introduction. We saw Mao singing and we also saw Madoka gambling with donuts. What a queen. Episode 28, when Elena and Madoka uh, got on in a kind of heated argument, trying to convince the other how amazing the other one was. And so they started understanding how they both see each other like as less as they actually are. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous episode. And in that episode, we saw wet-haired Elena as well. Uh, we saw episode 39, which was Elena's speech and then Joe's Planet School. Episode 45, Hikaru's Twinkle Imagination. All of the Twinkle Imagination episodes actually deserve a honorable mention, but episode 45 was gorgeous. And another honorable mention to episode 49, which was an amazing, amazing and beautiful and strong finale. But now we get to number one and I'm going to read the name of the episode because I am not going to be able to take it by heart. Number one, the best episode of Star Twinkle Precure is episode 48. Overlapping thoughts. The star of hope shines through the darkness. And this is probably one of the best episodes in the whole anime world. If I were to choose like the, the best anime episodes ever, at this episode would be in them. For sure would be in them. What a way to close a season. And like I'm not gonna say much about it because I've I've said a lot, like there's like two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, and like I've said a lot about this episode, but you know, just to sum it up, it had it all. It had emotion, it had like the girls singing the transformation song in the void of space, bringing their imaginations and the powers back, 
Um, what else did we have? And then, like, after that, we the fight started. And for the first time, we were able to see the girls use it. First and only time, we were able to see the girls using the Twinkle Styles in an actual fight, not only in the power. And, like, the costumes are very beautiful. But I feel like it's probably very hard to animate those costumes because, they're like, they're big. And in the fight itself, it was just incredible. The fight itself, like... All of the girls were able to shine, all of the girls were able to show like a bit of their minds, a piece of their minds, and they were able to showcase who they are and what the Star Twinkle world represents. And after the fight, we also have like the goodbyes. The goodbyes were impressive. Ophiuchus is a great villain and her goodbye was awesome. We had the girls saying goodbye to each other and the girls, you know, giving their powers away to restore Fuwa's existence, which is very Precure-like and something like you're sacrificing something that's important to you to bring something that's even more important. And, you know, the girls saying goodbye. Hikaru and Lala saying goodbye to each other. You know, Lala losing the ability to speak because the pendant wasn't there anymore. And she forcing herself to say Japanese, to actually speak Japanese. It was just incredible. And it shows a lot like how Lala is as a character be, by being um, like how reliable she was on her AI before. And then how she started trying to learn things for herself. And Japanese was probably one of those because she was at school and they studied Japanese at school. So... Uh, I don't even have words. Like, episode 48, it had it all. It had everything we love in Precure. It had emotions, it had fights, it had power, it had impact, and I'm going to re remember this episode forever in my life. And overall, Star Twinkle is a season that I'm going to take with me forever. I loved it, I still love it, I wanna keep on talking about it, and I'm going to do that for a while, and... You know, I'm just impressed on how this season is being strong, powerful, and brilliant. So, this journey isn't over for us yet. I still want to do more Star Twinkle content, and I'm going to do that. But anyways, for now, that's it. Please leave a comment and let's keep talking uh, about your favorite episodes, your top five, in the Star Twinkle episode list. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Bye-bye!